ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Scry Syndrome Podcast, the best TV podcast in the land. Says I, I am Ben Gilman. As always, I'm joined by Tom Hill. Hey. I haven't got anything funny for Tom this week. Stephen Moffat, <laughs> fan girl, fan boy. Yeah, there we go. We go with that. I'm joined by a <laughs> man who's hey. Fan girl, what the hell? Fan boy, <laughs> fan girl. Depends if you're wearing a kilt on the weekend. I don't care. Um, no, I'm joking. No, um, we're away. <laughs> Troy Salmon, or as I, or as uh, my WhatsApp autocorrect says, Tory Salmon. Yeah, I came out of nowhere. I was like, where did Tory come from? <laughs> what the heck? But yeah, hi guys. Hi guys. But your, day, your name is now Tory. Good luck. Yep. Good luck for you at the next election as well. You. I need it. <laughs> the whole country's okay. going to vote you out. Oh, God. I'm joined by. I'm not gonna lie, that gets they get the, you call me that sometimes. Like, hey, Tory, I'm like, no, it's Troy. Troy, damn it. Troy. Well, your name is now Tory. So, congratulations. Um, we're joined by um, the witch's best friend, Tara Chloe. What? What? Really? <laughs> Batman's best friend. Batman's best friend. I don't have to get into this again, do I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please don't. <laughs> and I'm joined by another, an, a really good, a really good colleague of mine and friend. Um, how I'm going to hopefully not get her surname wrong. It's um, joining <laughs> us today for the first and hopefully more future times as well. It's Helen uh, Carnes. Let's call her Cairns. Um, Cairns. A lot of English people say Cairns. Yeah. But I'm Scottish, so it's Cairns. So. Cairns. It's- Ali Cairns. I'll, okay. I'll just do what everybody else does, and I'll just spell it for you, which is C A I R N S, and you can listen to that and have it any way you want it in your head. Yeah, there is a Scottish, Scottish woman where I work. She's got literally the same um, last name as well. So she's like, Cairns, you got to say it some way, I'm like, yeah, Cairns. Cairns. Yeah, Cairns. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Right. Well done. That was good, actually. That's better than yeah. some members of my family. I'm, 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 I'm good at pronunciations. I've always have been. So. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Helen. We really appreciate it. It's You're been a long very time. Very welcome. Coming. Thanks for Hope having me. The first of many times. You're very welcome. We I do love, love I do love talking and I do love telly. So you know, it could be a good thing. And we both know what we're going to talk about today. That's going to upset the other lot. But that's fine. This is a <laughs> space. Yes, we but will. How is everyone? Yeah, I'm week? good. Been? I'm doing good. Always. This with you guys. It's going to be lit. It's going to be amazing. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I already um, know. What you- I'm good. Ben? I'm ready. I'm ready. How are you, Ben? I'm good. I'm a little bit feisty this week, but I'm okay. You're feisty. Feisty. Yeah. Feisty. I'm, I'm pretty happy. Triple boosted now. Triple boosted, vaccinated. Nice. Hey. It's all good. Oh, I, I had my flu jab today, so. I need to do that this weekend. Just really, oh, just really tweak that um 5G signal up on my phone. <laughs> five five this year. I feel I sound like a bloody needle addict of heroin right now, but this is my fifth needle this year. <laughs> oh my God. How many injections have you got? My God. God. Isn't that quite restrained for a heroin addict? Yeah, I know. I'm really low level. I just keep it on the I, I, I think five in a year, you're not technically an addict. but um... no, I just do it just to be cool. So it's fine. <laughs> That's why I've got no hair. I'm trying to be the guy from train spotting. Anyway. These Scottish stereotypes are all coming out tonight, aren't they? Death. Oh my goodness, I did not come here to have my nationality denigrated like this. <laughs> you think about that? That this is my bad, I apologise. Oh anyway, well, we all I'm, know here, to... I'm here having to put up with it every week, Helen. You yeah, especially what? Tom, he gets, yeah, he gets it in the neck every week. I was um, nice to him this week. Let's go full Braveheart on him, Tom. <laughs> I could have called you Stephen Moffat's wank bank, but I decided to backstep on it, Steve, on, on, on that. Aww. Because we've gone. I mean, we're still cleaning the walls from your Sherlock special where you basically called Stephen Moffat a god. I don't recall actually saying Spider-Man that. Spider-Man can climb on the ceiling after that. If we're talking about Scotland and Stephen Moffat, then we surely have to mention, John, oh, look, it's my cock barrowman. <laughs> oh, yes, there we go. Fuck go you, John ahead, Barrowman. Get him. Get him. Get Recently. Him. I went for John Barrowman because yeah. I even back in 2005, I found him getting his cock out and slapping people and putting it on people's shoulders on set was very weird behavior. And cutting birthday quite... cakes with it, apparently. 
I got into a rant where I said he was a shit actor anyway, and he was terrible in Torchwood. He's an awful well, actor. speaking as probably somebody who's a lot older than everybody else here, I remember him from John Barrowman's movie game on Children's BBC in the 90s. Oh, and you could, you could have ascertained from that that he was a wrong one, but no. The old question is, who's more popular, John Barrowman or Jimmy Savile as a children presenter? Okay, that's too dark. Ooh, We've got dark. Yeah. Oh my we went God. Dark very quickly. I'm not prepared. This is me. You you will get used to it when you uh, during this recording. No, um, John Barman's career is basically over anyway. So, so is Noel Clark's. They both, yeah. Noel Clark yeah. was very gleeful about John Barman's penis adventures on stage and that YouTube clip as well. So, they've both been cancelled due to various behaviours. So. There we go. I think I think maybe if we say cancelled, then it plays into the type of people that think that's a thing. I just think they've been held accountable to the, for their actions. I don't think it's a bad yeah. thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah, they uh, both deserve to be held accountable for what they've done. Exactly, but, exactly. But I think I think a certain type of um of right winger has taken people being accountable for their actions now and taken it as some kind of new thing. Whereas actually, no, we're just, just yeah, right, it's just the right thing to do. We're tightening it up a bit where it's not acceptable to do that because if I yeah, did exactly. that in the workplace, I'd be gone. I'd be like, I'd be jailed. I'd be, I'd be fired. Well, you would, like, yeah. I never thought, I've never found yeah. that type of behaviour acceptable. So John Berman just, like, yeah, I agree. Just, yeah. Anyway, let's have some fun. <laughs> After that brief interlude. Yeah, well, you know, I think we've talked about John Barrowman enough. I don't want to give him any more publicity. He <laughs> needs it. Let's not do it. Um, so, Troy. Yes. You're going to talk about Squid Game from Netflix. Oh, so, okay. So that's yeah. just, oh, who, who said, who said, oh, is that you? You scrolled yourself on YouTube. I'm a follower <laughs> of your YouTube channel, so I know. Squid I know he, yeah, he watches my channel. So, yeah, I've, I've been talking about it episode by episode. So. I'm just going to um, let you go know first. Yeah, yeah. So I've watched four episodes of, of Squid Game, Tara. I've watched four episodes. Mm -hmm. um, wait, how much have you seen first before I go any further? How much have you seen? I've seen the I whole thing. It. Yeah, me too. Okay. You, you seen it. Go ahead. I've I'm seen not the whole surprised thing, yeah. Tara has watched all the Squid Game. Okay. Okay. Right. So, I've only seen four episodes, so I'm, I'm up to the tug mm -hmm. of war. So I'm literally, that's the last one. Oh, the tug of war, yeah. Yeah, so oh, we can't that sounds sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That sounds sexy. Yeah, tug of war over what? <laughs> No, I'm in sex education mode still. Sorry. <laughs> this guy. I'm going to break it down. So, the so Squid Game, if you don't know the actual plot of the, the actual show, it's about these kind of down and outers, um, basically these kind of people who are kind of owe money to people, um, in, always in debt to these, probably these loan sharks or these businesses. Mm. And they literally get a chance to play this game. They call it Squid Game. So, it's a literal place where they do a selection of games and if they lose they get killed but so they're, they're, they're really like childish games aren't they they're kids games yes. they're playing. it's yes. not like yes. any it's you, you, you think yeah. like it reminds me i don't know if anybody's watched league of gentlemen but there was a there's a sketch in that about a doctor that took people back to his house to play board games and yes. in, in in exchange <laughs> yeah. for treatment it's a bit like that but with a budget i mean yeah with a massive budget <laughs> That is a fantastic for this, description. This podcast. That's amazing. That's amazing. I didn't think about that. Right there. But, yeah. but yeah, that's what I'm saying. So literally, it's that because um apparently the person who actually made this um let me get his uh, name in the record. I just remembered it, but I forgot it now. Um, it's a Korean Dr. drama, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's drama, yeah, a survival yeah. drama. Yeah. So um so he literally he spent all his money making the show, by the way, and he it was literally broke. So all of a sudden, this just got big. Apparently, it was 10 years in the making, apparently. No one will pick it up. And all of a sudden, it just hit. And I was like, everyone, they were number one show right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the biggest show that's ever been on Netflix, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, it's just huge. The numbers it's making is insane. At the moment, it's Midnight Mass or Squid Game. Those are the two big shows everyone's talking about at the moment. Midnight Mass, I've still got, yeah, literally, Ben, I'm literally picking up on that, but I'm going to watch that at some point. But Squid Game right now, oh my days, it starts off. Literally, red light, green light. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Which is, all right, for, for those of you who, yeah, it's it's basically, what's the time, Mr. Wolf? 
Yes. Right, fair but enough. With a gigantic, creepy robot doll. <laughs> yeah, a robot doll. Just her, just a massive, mechanicalized girl. Um, like literally in front of a, a tree, a massive tree that they've um, basically manufactured out of nowhere, literally built in this room on this um island, this pier somewhere. Oh, um, yeah. Korea. So literally, she hides, basically hides, she says red light, green light, turns around, eyes are moving all over the place, <laughs> scanners, motion sensors. And then literally, this guy just gets, I was like, oh my, this guy gets shot, bah! First one, he just starts moving. And everybody else thinks it's the joke at first, and then somebody else gets shot. And there's a whole free for all, and then chaos ensues. And I was like, "Oh my day! This this show is amazing! This show is amazing!" Oh, so literally, I was like, "It's so good." Because I'm a fan of stuff like this, anyways. I'm, I like stuff. I'm um, movies like The Cube, Escape Room, Bell oh. Bell Experiment, stuff like that. I've watched all that recently, actually, because I'm a yeah. big horror fan. So I'm a massive horror fan. The Cube is the Cube, the one that's got the codes on the floor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed really, that film. I didn't like the ending, but yeah. And I, I just, I feel like it's very 1997. The way they dealt with a disabled character is, you wouldn't yeah. get away with that now. Oh, yeah, 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 stuff like that. Yeah, yeah stuff but like I, that. Yeah, it's kind of bored. Like, now it's a new problematic problem. <laughs> yeah, but um, I love stuff like that. Any of the, the, the uh, sci-fi stuff. I mean, all that stuff, horror stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, this show at least makes you feel for these characters, like this, especially for the for the main character in the show. You should feel from like, oh my, this guy's down his luck and living with his parent. Literally, he's got no money. He's, he's, he's an ex chauffeur. He's, he's going down to the bookies. Anyone, anyone who lives in the UK always, always knows these group of people going down to the bookies, living in there day in, day out. Yeah. <laughs> so, literally, everyone knows those kind of people. So, uh, even family members. So, hey, everyone can relate to that kind of thing. And he wins a, wins a horse bet. So, this kind of kicks off the Squid Game kind of plot. Because he's trying to basically um, buy his daughter some dinner because he only sees her from time to time, obviously because he's divorced from his wife, mm-hmm. and he has no money. So he wins a bet and he's like, "Okay, yes, I got this money now." Um, and all of a sudden, these loan sharks come out of nowhere, and I'm like, "Oh my day!" This is this just starts kicking off. Loan sharks chase him through these bookies. Um, Why and then chase- yeah, they chase him through the bookies because because he owes the money. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, so this one, like this guy is showing up about money. He's literally waving money around outside the bookies. Like, yeah, to call the money I want. Hey, daughter, I'm gonna basically order anything you want. I've got the money here. Let's go. Let's do it. And then he's like, wait, hey, what's going on? Yeah, they're chasing. They're literally chasing through the bookies as I said before. Chasing from the toilet. Well, before he does, before that happens, he bumps into this girl who you're gonna see throughout this show. Uh, who's, you know, basically he calls her the pickpocket. Because she pickpockets him with the money that he won. And then they beat him up and then they make him sign a contract. you hold holding to them. And then literally, that's when he meets this guy from Train to Busan fame. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, there we go. Sorry, that's going to lead into the, yeah, to lead into the plot of the Squid Game. Okay, right. Yes. So he plays the card. I don't know, Carl, if, if you know this game. Have you ever played that game before? Where you yeah. have to hit this card and you flip it over? You know I've yes. never heard of it. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, I've literally never heard of it. It's called Jack, Jackie, or Jack, something like that. Um, where you literally get um, a red, red card, blue card, um, and you put the the card down on the floor, and then you got to hit it, and it's got to flip over on the other side. And literally, whoever whoever lost had to pay a hundred grand to the to the other person. <laughs> yeah, so 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 the guy, the main character, yes, Song Gi Hoon, yeah, he he literally loses the first one, and he goes, "Wait, have you got any money?" Where I'm the friend for some guy, I'm going Gong So he goes, Got any money? He's like, No, 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 I got no money. So you have to pay with your body. Oh, okay. uh, that sounds like <laughs> prostitution. <to me. laughs> I don't know Ben's going with this. No, Ben, no, 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 no. So it's literally, here, here we are, here we are. So literally, he slaps the main character in the face. And so he goes, Okay, so I have to slap you and I remove that, that debt from you right there. So, bam. Well, you see the spider's face is just bright red. By the end of this, 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 all these slaps are bright red. And then all of a sudden, he wins one. And he's like, yes. And then he literally goes, he tries to slap him. Stops his hand and goes, no, no, no. I got the money right here. 100 grand. There he goes. Gives him, gives him the money. Um, and then he goes, he gives him a card and goes, yes. There is a place where you can win these games. And you can win X amount of money. How much billions of pounds. Um, and then that's when... Kind of gets the ball rolling, all these characters that you see in the show. Um, so yes, yeah, so 
to characters in the show. There's a bit, I think there's like literally for me, there's six main characters. They got the there's an Indian guy in here who I, I love this guy's character. There's an Indian guy in here. He's in he's a Korean, and it's like, oh the diversity, they actually put the diversity character in this show, and I was surprised. He said like, Helen's laughing right now. Helen's laughing. I was shocked. I was like, wait a second, is this wait, 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 wait. Wait, who are you? He's talking clear Korean. I'm like, wait. And I saw him and I was like, okay, okay. He's got Abdul Ali in the show. I was like, okay, okay. He's got a family and all that. Yeah, in the show. Um, so then he's literally one of the main characters. He helps the main character out from time to time in the show as well when throughout these games. Um, and he's got he a is a bit of a butt monkey though, isn't he? Like he is a bit of like a whipping boy in that thing. He really does get the watch. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes it's kind of yeah. This sounds like a show where you shouldn't get too attached to any characters in case they go da and go. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no spoilers. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't yeah. Know. I can't. I what can't answer that question. Oh, no point. No point. Okay. Uh, um, so, yeah, so basically that kind of thing where you just kind of like a. You get so scared from the four episodes that I've watched. That's, I'm like, oh my days, this is going to go. I'm like, it's, it's good. they're going to lose it. There's a, there's a game where. He has to cut out. There's like a um, was it called sugar? I can't remember what it was called. It was called oh, sugar yeah, honey. Um, candy. Honeycomb, sugar honeycomb. So yeah, it's honeycomb. honeycomb so like, you know, yeah. it's like stuff from the middle of crunchies. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Tom, like, they call it um, they call it cinder toffee in Scotland. Oh, it's cinder toffee. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh yeah. So literally, there's like there's shapes in the, the middle of these um these, these honeycombs, and like you got a square, a circle, a triangle, and an umbrella. Honestly, when I saw the umbrella, I was just like, come on. <laughs> oh, are you serious? The, and the, the thing is, his friend knew as well that it, the umbre- if he got the umbrella, he's going to have the hardest time doing it. And he was like, he was about to call, it, call him and go, hey, Dan, I change your fate. But he's like, nah, never mind. I was like, oh, are you serious? Are you serious? You're going to let him go out like that? I was like, oh, I was, I was like, oh my God, it's crazy. But somehow he found, the, he found the most ingenious ways of winning. And the old man, number one. The number one entrant. He's the he's my favorite character. He's literally my guy right now. The old man. Okay, right. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, yes. I think Trey's t- is poking the spoiler boat. Yes. Oh, see, I, I yeah, can't, I can't just, see him reacting yeah, to this. Yeah, yeah. We can't react to this without much of a spoiler. I can't reacting to this. I'm so. trying. I try not to make him say too much because like, I know they know. Sounds but, like um, a significant character in the plot by the <laughs> time. He's amazing. He's like a sensei, and in, in this movie, it's like, yeah, this is how you do it. This is how you get stuff done. Like Mr. Miyagi oh my God. I'm like, this guy's lit. Do you know what? This guy's awesome. Yeah. Do you know when you listen to a podcast and the host is saying something, and you yeah. know something, and you're shouting yeah. at them? I'm having that whilst being on the podcast instead of listening to the podcast. <laughs> Like Inception, it's just going. It's, in, it's, 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 it's a shout within a shout, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's I'm, I'm like this old man, I'm like oh, and then they, they have these votes and these inter stuff, this this interplay like storylines are just like so good within this show. Like everyone's just like close knit within this um this building, this establishment where they put them in, and stuff kicks off. And it's like it's almost like the raid at one point where the flashing lights just go strobe light and just kicks off at one point where they're all just like trying to be trying to eliminate each other at this fire. I don't know. Okay, so I'm saying too much already. I don't go. I can literally go all day with this. So it sounds like much better. Alice in Borderland. Okay, right. (laughs) I remember there was a version of that, the Japanese Alice in Borderland, and it was okay, but it didn't quite end. But it already sounds a lot more better. Awesome. I would say it's um closer to uh, a very bizarre adaptation of the Crystal Maze. Oh, it's okay. yeah, yeah. a good one. Yeah, I like that. With like Battle that. Royale death. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I'm it's not that. it's not just a ticking off from Mumsy and a lock in. It's um, <laughs> it's literal death. Literal, literal death. Literally, when they find out the shock, and I, I love the. Expressions on their faces in this song is amazing. I love it. That thing is great. Top notch. I, I have seen a very tense scene of um, the, the wolf game where if you get caught moving when someone turns around. Yeah, that's red light, green light. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, red light. it's terrifying. Okay. <laughs> the, the old man was the, the main guy moving, nobody else was moving. It was interesting, so I'm kind of getting an idea for it. 
<laughs> yeah, the way he does it. He's like, everyone's scared to move, and the old man's just like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. And I love it. I love that. Character visually. I'm going to watch this this week. Oh. Wait. <laughs> do you can imagine the swear words when I saw Troy review the episode? It's like, mother... <laughs> <laughs> You already knew. So you saw that, you knew. You knew. Oh, God. Well, yeah, no, she said to my wife, that mother effer before I came in here. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, my gosh. I was tell Tara and Helen love it. So what do you guys think about the show overall, then? What do you guys think about it? It's just... You it's, it, listening to you talking about it now, only on episode four, is making me nostalgic for <laughs> the, the, the bits when, you know... Before I think the thing is, is that when I'm watching something, I spend the whole time wishing that I knew what the ending was and getting really yeah. like frustrated that it's not ended. And then once it's finished, I'm like, oh god, I wish I'd taken more time with that because I really like, I really would like to save that. So I think I'm probably going to do a rewatch because I think there's there is a couple of twisty bits that there there's <laughs> bits like I'm, I'm I know that there's Easter eggs. Mm. So I would uh, watch rewatching in hindsight is always good because then you can spot the Easter eggs all the way through. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of. See, I'm terrible because when I get to the end of a show, the one episode from the end, I tend to take my time with the last episode. I don't tend to finish things as much as I should. I take forever because I'm like Helen. I don't want it to end. I'm like, no, no. If I don't watch the last episode, it never finish. It, the, the characters don't have an end. I'm happy with that. <laughs> no one dies. It's fine. I walk away. <laughs> Have you just been really, really scarred by a bad finale, Ben? Is this what you're telling us? Yeah, well, the, uh, the, the, on this podcast, Lost is a regular kicking back. I will fight you. No, oh, no, 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 oh no, we have no, one. No, 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 no. Anybody who um, doesn't like the ending of Lost is welcome to line up and fight me. And that's oh, somebody put have, that. We have one. You got ahead somebody of, put you that in a, I think right this is here, Heritage wrote that in The Guardian the other week, and I have never agreed harder with anything in my life. The ending to Lost was perfect. And I, 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 I can give you a twenty-minute lecture on it if you like, but I am not having that talk in my presence. <laughs> no, back for the hundredth episode where we talk about shows. Oh, you this, you get me, you You've got an open invitation for April. What's happening in April? Is that the hundredth um... episode? We're going to do like a worst show ending <laughs> ever. Well, I will. I will. Yeah. Okay. Then it sounds like we're fighting. Um... Okay. <laughs> Whoa! I'll, 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 I'll bring I'll bring some um I'll bring some weapons. The ending of Lost was ideal. It was perfect. Ben, Troy is it, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I've started now. I've started now. You started me. It it was a show that was about people. So the ending was about people. It didn't need to explain itself. The show had an expectation of its audience's intelligence, and it kept that to the end. And it was perfect. I already film uh, the, all the holes I can poke, poke in this and argument. But we're part anybody of that didn't like the ending just didn't understand it. Oh, I needed you when, when I watched the end of Lost. I needed that you. That 100th episode is now a Helen versus the rest of Scry syndrome oh. fight. The 100th yeah. episode. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. <laughs> Helen, I want to be on your side on this, but I just can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> Me too. If it's, I think well, we can Tom, all agree I'm that, very Helen. sorry that you didn't understand the ending of Lost. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to that conversation. It's going to make a really good podcast of back and forth. I am, uh, I am more than looking forward to you educating me on why I should like the ending of Lost, Helen. I am ready to listen. And Thank Troy, you. well, don't worry. It's not the worst show. Troy's a charm <laughs> fan, so... Oh, come on, don't do that. Charm is amazing. Come on, now. Don't do that. I think we all know that the worst finale ever was the Dexter finale. See, I disagree oh, with that. You know what? Me, me and Tom have had a little debate about this. That Dexter finale was... I did not like it. I didn't like it. I did not like the ending. I'm sorry, I did not. I did not. Sorry, spoiler alert. I did not sit for eight seasons of that to be him with... Oh, he's a lumberjack now. Bye. <laughs> Does it help that there's a new season coming to kind of undo that ending? No. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, no, no. Okay. I'm still next angry. Week, it's coming out next week. It's going to be awesome. I, mean, <laughs> I forgave them for Lila, right? I forgave yeah. them for Lila, and then they did that to me. No, 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 no. no. Episode 100 <laughs> Dexter versus Lost, which is the worst ending of all time. <laughs> the guy who wrote it said basically the seasons ago he wasn't going to give Dexter a happy ending. I was like, yeah, fair play. Yeah, 
No, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't think Dexter was going to get a happy ending. What I would have liked is Dexter to have an ending. Sorry, is it lame? <laughs> I think they knew that they were probably going to come back to it a few years later, which is why they didn't give it a proper ending. I have a worse ending. It's called Doctor Who Season 12, The Timeless Child. So I beat you all on both. Nobody's defending that. that ben, was... stop invoking Doctor Who to win these arguments. <laughs> I live with a Doctor Who fanatic who rates Love and Monsters in his top 10 episodes. That is in the top I 10. I have heard episodes. some terrible Doctor Who arguments in my lifetime. <laughs> Love and Monsters is not a bad episode, actually, so it is it is high up. I'll fight that. Oh, God, I'm going to have to introduce you two now, aren't I? <laughs> Oh, yeah, but anyway. So you can talk about Love and Monsters. So let's talk about Timeless Child. How do you feel about that, Helen? I'm sorry, I don't know the names of things. You're going to have to describe what episode the that is. The one with well, Jodie Whittaker is not... Where William Hartley is no longer the first Doctor. It is a bunch of multiracial children. And it basically PC nightmare. I think I checked out by that point, to be you honest. You are very lucky. <laughs> she checked out as well. You are very lucky, because I swore more than I've ever sworn that podcast when that episode landed. I was like, you can do whatever you want in the future with the Doctors. You can't change the past. Don't try that. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's so obvious. Sorry. Yeah. I'm withholding that. I'm holding myself in. So episode 100, I'm bringing the time of Jared to my, my pick. Anyway, maybe we should just do a lost episode for the 100th episode and just be done with it. A war versus <laughs> Helen. Yeah, the podcast versus me. That's great. I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm great. I'm so oh, happy that I, I've I'm, all... I'm going to rewatch it. Just to, just I'm, to see, I'm, just I'm, to see I'm all... so happy that I've already inspired such anger on my first episode. <laughs> no. You know what? By the time we've done, get to 100, you might have been on the podcast more times if you want to be on. So maybe yeah. you'll be similar regular and then we just build up to it. And it's like the Avengers endgame of this podcast. It's just like the war. You're Thanos with the Avengers. We've got to stop. <laughs> That's harsh. <laughs> I love she's that. the one, the powerful one. She's the one on her own. She's got the infinity gauntlet, and we're the Avengers. We've got to try and stop her from saying lost is good. Lost is lost is honestly like I get emotional just thinking about how good lost is. Okay, wow, okay. emotional. Wow. I'm gonna bring my brother onto this podcast because then it's Helen and my brother versus. It's a bit more balanced, them, and it's a bit more fairer. I can take a lot of you. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I like that. I like that. I like that. Confidence, sure. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that's our 100th episode, guys, in April. That's going to be fun. Don't worry. Helen is not banned from the podcast. She can come back as many times as she wants. She's got she's opinions. I like it. We like it when we don't always agree. That is the fun part of this podcast. Cool. I like that. Right. Now, who's, who's next? next? Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about Midnight Mass then. Oh, Midnight Mass. On yep, as I said, uh, um, when I was on this podcast last week, Alex and Troy both kind of went, Hmm, I'm watching this too. And we talked about religion and like hopefully it wasn't going to be Catholic bashing. I'm not a Catholic, but I'm kind of sick and tired of hearing Catholics are evil. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're a bunch of pushy bastards, you know, they're child rapists and all touchy feely with priests and all this crap. I've, I've heard it before. I don't want to see that anymore. I'm bored of that. So, and I did say if I was a female, I would slap the shit out of this woman. Who is what <laughs> I'm about to say, that what most people think Christians are, which they're not, is we hate everyone that's not a Christian and like, we are better than you. We hate Muslims. And she really is nasty to a Muslim character in this show. But, but she's the only bad Christian. I would just put that out now. The rest of them are mild, level headed people. Anyway, Troy, have you watched the rest of it? Yeah, literally t- um, towards the end, I got literally one episode left now. So, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna, almost there. I'm gonna have to put my punches on the last episode, then. But what do you think is going to happen in the finale? Squid Game. <clears throat> I could tell you what happens in the finale of Squid Game. I can't. I haven't, I haven't even started watching Midnight Mass yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in the finale. Let's oh, see if how close Helen gets. Oh, to what? Sorry. The Midnight Mass. Midnight yeah, Mass, yeah, go for it. I've not shot. seen it. I have no idea, but um, um, it's very heavily Stephen King influenced, isn't it? 
Yeah. So, so I'm guessing somebody's going to get a massive redemption because that's pretty. No. Pretty general, isn't it? And um, maybe Wait. some, maybe the uh, the underdogs are going to get together and join the forces for good. And the things that made them unique are the things that give them their strength, and they're going to use their own individual strengths to beat the baddie. There you go. I. That's, I, that's every Stephen King it. book. Troy knows at this point what the thing is that is meant to be the non-human thing. Yeah, yeah. Cause, cause it's I'm, not I'm, an angel. Yeah. It's obviously not a fucking angel. It oh, looks like yeah. Satan. I'm sorry. I called it. It's it's not even a demon. It's obvious when you can go into yeah, sunlight. You know exactly what it is. It is. Yeah. Sorry, my language. Um... It's from the guy did um, Haunting of Hill House and Blind Manor, Doctor Sleep, Octius. I love Mike Flanagan. It's a very good show, but the townspeople are massive idiots. Like, <laughs> it's clear it's not an angel. An angel ain't that ugly. Oh, well, no. Ugly. Like, oh, the angel? I, I, it's, it's basically set on a small island um, off the coast of Maine, which is yeah. where Stephen King tends to put all his horror. Yeah. Um, it's about it's about uh, someone we call for we follow called Riley Finn. Um, he comes back to the island to live with his family and he try and get here. He's a relapsed Catholic. He killed a woman in a drunken car accident, and we find out that a priest has come to visit the island, and various miracles are starting to happen. And it's very, it's got a lot of talking. A lot of people complain that it's too talky, but I love the conversations that I'm having about. Um, Aphorists and um, Christianity, and I love the law. I love the law. So it's good, it's good stuff. Like that. I like it. It's really intelligent, but it's not saying um, religion is bad. It's <laughs> it's slow. It's talky. A lot of it's people are bored of it. But then again, I like the fact I need in my horror or in any television show. I need to care about the characters. Mm. I don't care about them as real people. When they start, if something bad happens to them, I don't care. And I can count the amount of, here's some titties, oh, here comes Michael, oh, she's dead, type of horror films I've seen. I don't like stuff. movies. I like intelligent horror. I'm a big horror fan. Like, I need to feel sorry for these people. I need to feel like the actual human beings with their flaws. This show does that really well. Okay. Troy's one episode of Why, so I can't kind of get into it. Everything's on fire, though. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, because the thing, the thing just or metaphorically. Yeah, did you just say titties? And metaphorically. Oh no! Sorry. And there is barely anyone <laughs> left after it's done. Okay, did you just say titty? Ben, you let her, you let her in. There you are no titties because this is intelligent horror. This is not Michael Myers or Freddy Krueger or any of the boring slasher movies. <laughs> Chucky, or yeah. what's the other guy? What's the cheap knockoff? Jason. Never you a good just, movie there. Okay, you just watched like, movies Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, is it is it meant to these or? It's re- it's more hereditary and Midsummer and Get Out. Very intelligent commentary on religion. It's very good. <laughs> Slow. It's seven hours of talking, but it puts its scares in generally, and it's not it's a serious, jump scare. Yeah, it's not the witch. It's not the witch. It's the rich shows, not movies. And this, besides Squid Game, is the big show everyone's talking about at the moment. It's very divided. <laughs> the people that don't like it, I think, like a bit more speedy. It could be a bit more speedy. Um, I fell asleep a couple of times watching it because I walk around a lot during my job. So it's not a quality problem. It's just there's a lot, there's 10 minute scenes of people sitting in chairs talking about very important subjects. Um, there's great talks between the priests and non-believers. It's really intelligent. It's engaging, yeah. The priest is... Or through... It does show how sometimes religion can be blindly followed and there's not much room to manoeuvre with non-believers sometimes. For some people. In that way. Like, you know, you're so strongly that religion, you don't trust anyone else. Yeah. Then that's... Yeah. There is a collection of people right, that are very more open-minded and different like, there's a Muslim, there's a great moment where the police officer is a Muslim police officer um, 
Mm. He talks. Um, he talks about his experience being a police officer after 9-11 and Ooh. how the, the government started to follow him because they thought he was ISIS and all this shit for no reason. Yeah. And he puts you in his boots for a bit and how he had to get away from the mainland and be on an island where he can be himself, where no one's judging him and all this stuff. It's really powerful. It's like a seven-minute monologue and it's it's powerful. Because you put yourself in issues. That reminds me of um, is, uh, have you guys watched Clickbait? Oh my days! Oh my days! So many network shows, shows I'm on my yeah. list at the moment. Well, that, that, that's it's similar. They've got like a guy who's a Muslim policeman, um, detective trying to get onto the murder squad, but because it's all like, uh, we're we're American, we don't want Muslim on our t-. like the subtext says is that they don't want him, so he tries to kind of get on this case because he's he's a missing persons then the missing persons case becomes a potential murder case. So he's like, oh, I know about this case. I'm going to get myself on this case. I've got to, this is the one I'm going to prove myself on. So it's interesting that they've done that there as well. Like it seems to be a, a, a tone that a mm. lot of mm. dramas are taking is like having people, mm. you know, having this kind of Muslim, it's almost, it's almost a trope now, isn't it? Really? There's a great bit though. Muslim police, police officer post nine nine eleven. It's a great character piece, and the great thing is his son is slowly wanting to go because of the um, miracles. He has these conversations with his dad. I'm going to go to. I'm going to be a Christian, which is a fascinating thing. Conflict there. I've never seen that before for a Muslim character. Um, mm. Like, there's not much. Like. I'm really glad that I'm excited that this Muslim character, that these Muslim characters are getting explored as human beings. And there's a great bit where he educates the Christians of, we believe in God, but we have a different telling of it. We believe in the same God as you. And I, that, that's educating people, us on mm. the Muslim Quran. And that is humorizing Muslims. I think we need to see more of that because that is brave. That is fantastic. I love that. Because I'm getting educated more as well. I'm learning more about it. The, the world and like I just want to applaud this show for the smart writing of that type of stuff Wait, because it's great writing. I've got to admit it's great writing for the show it's great writing it's just really hard to watch when you, you're tired from walking around yeah, you, can't, you, can't can't watch the, you can't watch the show tired you cannot, you cannot my wife said it. is this show shit I was like no I just I just tired and when it's lot, scenes of people just talking I'm gone but anyway so I'm a bit, the, the finale is, I'm really happy with it. You everyone, like the finale, is, is it everyone gets bit in the ass karmically, I can't complain. Um, and Troy, you got to episode six. So the survivors, <sighs> it, it's really clever. Uh, there's a lot of sleight of hand going on. Okay. And oh, yeah. let the like, bodies hit the floor from drowning pool should soundtrack. <laughs> Let the bodies hit the floor. That's Metal Anthem from 2001. Oh, Tara knows Drowning Pool. Yeah, there we go. That's great. Yeah, here we go. Drowning Pool's the one. Let the bodies hit the floor. That and um, Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin should be in every fight scene. That's a good shot. That's a good film. That's a good song. Um, So I wanted to talk about that. Go watch that. Because, like, Netflix is rolling right now. Because you've got Cowboy Bebop. You got Lock and Oh, yes. Yeah. That one's coming out. And yeah, I still can't forget your comment on YouTube where you said someone shit all over or something. Well, the actress decided to attack the fan base. I think actors should shut the fuck up. I think you should just do your things. Stop calling the fan, top fan, fan base toxic before they, they haven't even said anything. Just shut your face. Don't tell me about COVID or anything. Just do your acting and shut the fuck up. Done. Okay. Thank you. Because what she's done is she's attacked one fan. A lot of fans are you know, anime, anime, let's be honest, titty, titty, titty. What they're going to they covered her up. Now, listen, a lot of fans are happy about that because it doesn't look good. It wouldn't look good in a real person. So what they've done with this female character is they've made her wear practical clothing. And all the fan base is very educated and gone, great. She's gone and attacked one fan about it who complain there's always one fan she's attacked the entire fan base anime uh virgins i'm sorry i don't have big tits and it's like 
no, one fan said that, and now everyone's threatening to not watch the show because they don't like toxic people just backlashing on the fans when it's only one person. I've looked at loads of comments. Loads of people are still excited for the show, excited that they've made adjustments. And we don't want TNA. We want to see good characters. And it looks like they've nailed the characters, which is the most important thing. So, Cowboy Bebop, I think, will be good. Mm-hmm. But I would say to actresses and actors, shut the fuck up. Just talk about the show. Don't talk about the fan base. Just say it's an honour. Be grateful. Because you're going to get raked over the coals now. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Thank you. We don't want your politics and our entertainment. Just have fun with it. Anyway, there's Lock and Key. There's Witcher Season 2. There's Sandman. Yeah. There's, there's so much coming on Netflix on its own. Can I give you a lock and key fact that I found out the other day? Are you a fan of the comic books, Helen? Not a fan of the comic books, but I did like lock and key. And I found out that the woman that played the daughter in that Mm. has a famous father. Do you know who her dad is? Who? Alid Jones. Alec who? Alid Jones. For real? For real. (laughs) Alex Jones. The (laughs) controversial. Alid Jones. Jones. Walking Walking in the the air. Yeah. Accidentally. Snowman. Oh, the Sons of Praise presenter. Okay. Yes. That's cool. She does a really good American accent, by the way. Yes, she does. I didn't know. That's really good. If I can't clock if you're from a country, like they're the Muslim police officer from um, Midnight Mass is English. And he's got such a great accent. You couldn't tell he's American. You could yeah, think his, he's... his accent's awesome. Yeah, he's got a really good accent. He was in Bly Manor as well. I fucking love him. And he's got a picture on his toilet of him with his <laughs> pants out. He took a picture on Instagram and just went, now I see myself with my ass out when I'm taking his shit. What a weird day. It's lovely. He's really funny. Anyway. No, but okay. I wanted to big up Netflix because there's a lot of stuff coming out this year. Netflix is on fire. They are on fire. There's so much stuff coming out just on their own. Well, could I be perhaps controversial and talk about a non-Netflix program? Okay. RuPaul's Drag Race season three? No, well, that is coming up, yeah. But um, I would like to give... I don't know if there's already been one on the show. I haven't listened to every episode, I have to confess. Go for it. Um, But it was the Ted Lasso finale today. Who? Ted Lasso. Lasso. I've heard that name. Okay. And if you haven't watched Ted Lasso and you can watch Ted Lasso, um, I would thoroughly recommend it because the finale was today and I literally can't stop thinking about it. So it was the finale of the second series. I've, I've seen like trailers and I'm like, it looks funny, but I've never actually gone. It, well, okay, so I'll, 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 I'll do a quick recap for those who haven't watched it, which is everybody else in the room apart from me, it seems. So um, <laughs> basically it's about this football club it's richmond afc which is a kind of like an amalgam of like maybe like somebody like brentford like a a a first division stroke premier league london team quite provincial and they hire uh an american football coach who's gone viral coaching his team um in a youtube video of him being like really happy and dancing and that and he's like this so he's basically coming into this team of london jaded upper first division footballers yes. with the kind of yeah irrepressible <laughs> cheerfulness that is um really hard for them to take at first because they're like you know if you could imagine putting a, an American into a room full of British footballers that's one thing but a very cheerful one is quite another so it, it, the, the first series is kind of about him finding his feet and winning them all over and getting them all on his side. And then the second series, it's kind of going a little bit deeper into all the relationships and all the interpersonal stuff. I mean, I'm being very vague here because there's a lot of spoilers, but um, the uh, Brett Goldstein is one of the writers on it and he plays one of the characters, Roy Kent, who's supposed to be like Roy Keane kind of thing. And at least that's what I think. I don't know football. But um, so he's like in the final, in the first series, he's like coming, he's the captain. He's coming towards retirement. He's a bit old. He's a bit injured, you know, trying to get, find his way in the world and um he's just won the an emmy for best supporting actor in a comedy or musical and like so well deserved 
but the man has got such a perfect face that it was it went viral for a little while that he was actually CGI. Like there was a there was a theory that he was like a FIFA character made flesh. A FIFA character. So he <laughs> he did this like um he did an Instagram post as in the, to to tell everybody that he wasn't a robot, but he did it as a emoji. So like the man is a legend, basically. But it's on Apple TV, so yeah, not accessible to everyone. But I know that I'd people say that Apple TV, I definitely. Yeah. And the product placement can get a little bit heavy sometimes, but all in all, it's really clever, really sweet, and like really touching. Like every episode's an emotional roller coaster. Like I'm so proud of my boys. I'm so proud of my Richmond AFC. They they just they just learn so many good lessons and they play together and it's just it's just really good. Like just Jason Sudeikis is the star and also one of the writers as well. And it's just like it it it's worth it's worth your time is what I would say to that and okay. the season finale for season two today just really cemented that for me like yeah I'd watch it if 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 you can as I said it's not accessible to everyone but um it is really good yeah tell us who okay yeah. 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 should we get RuPaul's Drag Race out of the way yeah let's do it so. Okay, this is a bit where Tom, yeah, everyone's going to get their books out. This is fine. This is the Helen Ben Aaron. It's fine. This, this is, is cool. me. This is, this is, yeah, this is where we come into our own, isn't it? Really? Yeah, we're we're going to get this done because I'm sick of the wrestling talk on this podcast and now they know how it's going to fail. All right, I love wrestling. Well, what is Drag Race if not wrestling for people who don't like violence? Uh, it's the most incomparable. It's the show where everyone's welcome as well. I've seen straight. Yeah, exactly. Um, and now a born woman just. Yeah. Uh, uh, a, a, a woman, somebody, a drag queen who was assigned female at birth. Yeah, absolutely. First amazing. Time, sorry. Absolutely groundbreaking stuff. Yeah. Do you think she would have murdered everyone and won the whole thing if she didn't get her ankle injury? I think that um, perhaps. The thing is, is, is I'm a bit cynical. I'm a bit more cynical. Like I think that that the I I don't think it's a competition, and I think it's like uh, like wrestling. I think the outcomes are predetermined, but um I don't think she would have won. No, um but I think that's the way it works, isn't it? We get an episode where we get some representation, and if that representation goes down, it goes down well. We might get a winner. So uh, in the American Drag Race, we had Got Mick coming second on the finale when she they should have really come in first but then we had a transgender winner of all stars so it's it, there's always an episode where these things test the water and then another episode where it goes on but yeah so, this is what happens when somebody who used to be a recapper watches television programs they get very very invested and um yeah start to look for patterns so my wife, my wife introduced me to Drag Race in 2019. She's a big mm-hmm. fan of um, this show. And I, at first, I, I do remember coming in and have just seen all these people. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, whoa, there's a lot to take in. Like, all these, what's this? This is Drag Race. There is, there, it is basically like the Olympics for extroverts, isn't it? It is. Um, and I always predict the winner somehow the finalist because i know rupaul's likes yeah and yeah it's, it's really obvious it's like you know um I'm, I'm, I'm as i said i'm a bit of a reality tv stan and you do get to you do once you get savvy to the way things are edited you can predict them very easily so i i got excited when i saw charity case because it's like a very demonly designed mm-hmm. something new i don't think I think it's just masks. I don't think that's going to get all the way through. Theresa May is my wife's favourite, the Spanish one. Oh, Theresa May is brilliant. But yeah, I think uh, Charity Case is leaning too far into Sharon Needles' lookbook, to be honest. I think the makeup's the same. Yeah, it's the same. Mm. The thing is, I'm going to be honest with you, Veronica Green deserved to get kicked off because she didn't bring it that week. I just felt like my wife is devastated. She's not I'm watching, devastated, yeah, great. but yeah. I she agree. feels. I'm not watching it anymore. I was like, really? It's the first time I've seen that from her. My favourite got kicked off last season. Um, what was it? I can't. No, I got behind um, not Ellie, LED. I got behind Lawrence Cheney last season hard, immediately. Oh. And uh, Bag of Chips. 
in season one. And oh, the American no, ones, Shay Lu K, uh, K, Shay Lu K, I can't say his name. Um, Eureka, Eureka. Eureka? Yeah, I've got behind certain queens. Like, there's some queens that just need to shut the fuck up. Like, uh, um, what's the name of the um, one from All Star Six? The one that I don't know. Shut up. Silky. Yeah. I hate Silky. Oh, Silky. Yeah, don't get me started. I, I'm not. I'm not a Eureka fan either. But um... I'm not an American Drag Race fan too much because they're too loud. Um, no offense. It's just our queens are a little bit more. Not yeah, so I think it's a, I think it's a different thing. I think British drag is very different just because it's a bit more homemade. <laughs> and I, huh? I'm not slagging off Americans. I love your enthusiasm, but sometimes it's too much. And in the British yeah, we're one, not, they you, tend to be more together. In Britain. We're self-deprecating in Britain, aren't we? And they tend to be more like a sisterhood in the UK one. I, I yeah. love. Um, Vanity Milan is most probably going to do uh, lip sync her way to the final. Like, well, taste it. it. Yeah, but the thing is, is like, um, I'm really annoyed because I think this happens a lot is when one of the girls who's good at sewing and is also a pushover ends up helping everybody else with their outfit and it doesn't help, you know, then they don't do their own one half. This happens so often in Drag Race and it really annoys me because they all just stand there and like, you know, what what happened this week, Veronica? And they're all like, um, mm, yeah. They what signpost happened, who's leaving. They signpost who's leaving yeah. every week. Yeah. And I turned to my wife and said, Veronica's going. And she was like, no. I was like, it's clear. Because the minute someone's struggling with a costume, that tends to be them. Off. Yeah. And there's too much drag race. I think it'd be nice to have a breather. I think there's too much drag race. You don't need all stars on top of the Christmas specials. Every country doesn't need all stars. I think we probably need to slow it down a bit. Because I am a bit bored of drag race a little bit now. I feel like well, kind of... RuPaul's making her money, isn't he? So it's it's always gonna. Okay. I love. How, sorry, can I just say? I know that you can't see this, but we're all on Skype, and Tom's reading a book because he's so bored with this conversation. But what he doesn't know is that the book is black, therefore it is just completely covering his face, and he just is all you can see is his background. <laughs> and it's and like it's, it's absolutely to hilarious point, yeah. to me because it's like <laughs> look at me making a point, and then you really aren't. I'm, I'm... <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I put the the window down so only I can see your face while you're talking. I've, I, their joke is falling flat on their face. Because uh, <laughs> I knew this would happen. So Scarlett. But I mean, Halle, the thing is, is, is I'm 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 in a bit of a of a bind because I love I I get really upset when there's not a series of Drag Race to watch. But you're right. I think the more episodes there are, the more there's a case of kind of diminishing returns. I've even said to my wife, and she disagrees. Like I'm a bit bored of you know what episode what's going to happen. RuPaul needs to really change it up a bit because I know when Snatch Game's on. I know, mm. I know exactly when the same stuff's going on. I know they're going to bring back a queen because this show's so annoying. Once you're eliminated, you're eliminated. You shouldn't come back. Oh, but there's a game within a game within a game. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we just talk about this? Um, Silky Nutmeg on All Star Six. So basically, they brought all the queens back for a last chance after each episode's filming. Silky, obviously, when you do one to face off, you don't know if you're going to be voted off. So mm. you're in the costume you're on the runway. Silky Nutmeg took the piss because she knew each week she was coming back. So she was able to prepare mm. various extras yeah. to take the piss. And I thought, you, you're not very good, actually. You got very lucky. Sorry, yeah, so they can yeah. a nipple. Um, Scarlet <laughs> Harlot. I love Scarlet, Scarlet Harlot. I think it's going to be because it's Kitty. Kitty's got a big mouth on her, and I think it's going to be Kitty. Yeah, Kitty or Kitty's Ella Vadley. Ella Vadley, yeah. Because I don't Rupert know, I can't, loves... I can't call it yet. I can't call it yet. Um, Scarlet Harlot, because he's got a big mouth on him, and and one thing RuPaul loves is, is a mouthy bitch. So. Scarlet Harlot is most probably the front runner, the East, the East Londoner. Crystal will get to the final, but I'm a bit bored of her already. Mm. Slap yeah. Her. Slap yeah, Crystal Versace, yeah, she's, I think, yeah, she's just a bit too, I think she's got a lot of money behind her and you can always tell when that happens. And plastic surgery. Yeah, but I think, like, some, 
you know, I think it, it, sometimes it matters how much money people spend, but other like some people, you can tell that they've just thrown a lot of money at it, and it's, I don't think it's fair. Like, and that's what I've always liked about the UK one is it's very homemade. It's very like, American for the first time. I was like, oh, and I don't yeah. like the way she, she was. I did like the way River Midway told her to basically piss off because I'm doing my costume. I'm not helping you. Fuck off, basically. Mm. Fuck off. Get out of there. Um, I I like River Midway. Quite cute. Um, first Asian, uh, half Asian on the UK drag race, which is nice to see. Um, I do think. Um, I, I do think the final three is going to be Kitty, Crystal, and uh, Scarlet. Though I think that's your final three. Uh, actually, I th- yeah, I would agree. I think it's I think it's going to be I think it's going to be Crystal. I think it's going to be Scarlet. I'm I'm not sure about Kitty. I'm not sure. I think there's there's um. I think there was somebody that I was looking at today, and I think they're ramping up, and I think it might be River. Like I think River's going to come on. River has grown on me because I love the point and statue thing. That was quite funny. That was brilliant. Um, it's definitely going to happen. But yeah, I think just to put it into perspective for everybody else when we talk about the cheapness of the British show. So in the American version on All Stars, if you win, if you get yes, the money. If you, thing. If you win an episode, like if you if you're the top um, person in an episode, you get ten thousand dollars. In the UK, if you come first in the episode, you get a Rue Peter badge. Helen. I want to cuddle you right now because me and my wife always take the piss out of the BBC for how cheap they are. Yeah, this, a Rue P- and it's literally a pin badge. It's a Blue Peter piss take, basically. And it's like, I'm sorry, you can't get the money? No, the money. you can't. You can't. Not, not in the BBC. No, it's a badge. It's a literal. And they're all fighting. They're pretending that that badge is high stakes when it's a literal uh, pin badge. And he calls it prestigious. And I, I've actually Instagrammed um, RuPaul about this. I've gone, are you telling me, sir, with all due respect, um, that Rue Peter Badge is worth it? It's like mm. championship football. The American ones is your premiership. You're, you're like, you know, you're not, hold on, your conference. It's like, we can't even pay you your conference. Yeah, it's like who, it's like I mean, going on who wants to be a millionaire and like getting a fiver. It's, it, it's, here's a it's million hard pound. To- in food vouchers go and have that bitch you know what i mean it's like here you go yeah. and it's like it's really but they're all like really excited going oh i can taste the rupee or badge it's in my reach and it's like mate mate you could have they were selling those at drag con last year like and i'm going to call <laughs> out this show on one more thing it's clear they have the same like they have the same clothes on when they do the headshots it's clear you got them in back in on the same day to talk about the whole series Mm. I'm not fucking stupid. No, I I I have read up about that actually, and they do wear the same outfits for continuity, but it's not necessarily shot on the same day. Thank you for that, because I know I, I don't look like a twat. Thank you. No, you don't look like a twat at all. But what I'm saying is, it's it's, it's all they do all come back, but yeah, they are told to wear the same outfits because the, the what was quite funny was in the last season because there was a break, um, Lawrence Cheney changed his hair and put on a bit of weight. And none of his clothes fit him anymore. So he had to adjust all of his clothes and then re-dye his hair oh to the colour that it was when he was on the first bit before lockdown. So that's why his hair was fried in the first second half of the season. I didn't notice that. Wow. He looked like he was wearing a wig for the second half of the season. And it was because he had to dye his hair back to the colour that it was. Um, I'm just kind of... So we do know, right, we've lost an extra queen. We've lost a queen. No, yeah. I don't Which is why last night should have been a double shanté, but don't get me started. Right. Has that ever happened before? Yeah, it happened. Like, it happened with Eureka in her original series. Um, a it's shanté, happened. With, you both got to go. Yeah, no, a double shanté means they, they both stay. There's been a double. There's been a double. There's um, never been a double away. elimination. There has been a double elimination. When? Yeah, I can't remember when it was, but there definitely was one because, like, right, Paul was like, no, neither of you. T- I think one of them was like, I didn't didn't want to do it. He didn't want to send a friend home. And the other one was like, um, I I'm might get up actually because I think there'll be a double elimination. There'll definitely be a double. You both stay because they need to make sure that they do the whole episode quota. I think Vanity Milan's just going to end up dancing her way for it like a cheap slag, like a Trace did last year, and just survive mm. on shit costumes. 
I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. I'm she's good. I like the 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 rope dress she made. Mm. I don't think she should have been in the bottom. I think I don't know who should have gone in there, but she got. She was very unlucky to be in there. I think. Okay, so in series five of Drag Race, uh, Vivian Mahogany and Vivian Panay were a double sashay away. And in series eight, it was um, Dax exclamation point and Layla McQueen both got um. Okay, so there is precedent. There is precedence for a double sachet. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, we shall see where we go from here. I just like uh, my wife has quit drag race this season now, so um, I'm just going to ring you up on Friday, Thursday evening, going, Helen, hi. Did you see it? Did you see yeah, it? you can feel free to message me about Drag Race at any yeah, point. That's I what me and Troy used to do about Doctor Who and other shows back in the day, like when we were excited about a show. Troy, did you see what happened? It's like, yo. Oh, good times, good times. Definitely. That, that's the old fashioned way. I used to get excited, but now, yeah, my wife is heartbroken, so she's done. She I was so. Done. But, you know, it is what it is. It's good. I'm just a bit fatigued now with Drag Race. I get you. I get you. Because there's a Canada one with the worst hosts of all time. That was like, you couldn't even afford RuPaul. You're poor. Um, hilarious. Um, but yeah, I, I can't watch all these. I mean, scripts. Drag Race Down Under, don't, yeah, it was terrible. But um, My wife did not like it. I stopped watching because I was just like, I'm only watching the UK one now. Because oh. I can't. I can't be watching all the spin-offs because I just can't. I get you. I hear you. There's too much of it now. Yeah, I do like the All-Stars. The last phase of All-Stars, I think, was really good. I would like someone to put a bullet in Silky, though. I'm not a Silky fan. Just a tranquilizer dart. You don't have to kill her. Just knock her out and then eliminate her. She didn't get up. She didn't get up. Okay, she lost the dance. Okay, I think we've lost the, the the men in the room. I think we need to um. It's okay. It's okay. Is this is? Right, we've talked about it. I think we've cleared it. Okay. Oh. Okay, Tara or Tom, would you like to come back in the room, or Helen, have you got anything else you want to talk about? I can't think of anything. Um, I think you've talked about most things that I have. Yeah, that I would want to say because my two picks were Squid, Squid Game and Ted Lasso, and somebody got in on Squid Game first. So, oh, sorry, Helen. Sorry. That's all right. That's fine. That's fine. I was going to go literally go last. I'm out. I'm out. I, 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 I started, was like, Troy go first. I I'm pushing with... you first because I knew what you were going to talk about and I wanted to hear about it. <laughs> oh. You shouldn't put it on YouTube before we record the podcast. That's what your mistake was. Fatal <laughs> letter. Well, Helen seems to cross over with a lot of our favourites, so, you know, we can always bring her back whenever she wants to. Well, I'm always happy to come back. Yeah, give me a shake when you want me. That'll be fab. You can come back whenever you want. Open the I invitation. Will... Yeah, oh, that's cool. I will. So, it, it, yeah, excellent. We'll talk about that. Okay. We'll have a chat. We'll have a chat. Okay. So, Tom and Tara, which one do you want to go next? Uh, okay, I think I will laugh. It's fine. Okay, Tom. Okay. Wake up again. <laughs> the cheek, the nerve, the gall, the audacity, and the gumption. Yeah, that's me. That's a drag race quote, by the way. Yeah. Oh dear. More manly than you. I'm joking. <laughs> they probably are. I wouldn't give a toss because I wouldn't watch it. Anyway. You grumpy bastard. Anyway, sorry. Right, it's joking. not my thing, and I know it's not my thing. So <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I get it. I hate. I, gen oh. I genuinely have serious issues with RuPaul as a person, so that's why I don't watch it. That's a good yeah, point. Yeah, you can't. So, yeah, yeah. I yeah, get that. I, I get that. I give that. Yeah. I give that to you. I absolutely will give that to you. Yeah, not great. Yeah, I mean, not... The show, I'm, I'm sure I would probably enjoy the basic idea of the show because I've got nothing against drag queens at all. <laughs> so I probably would enjoy it, but I just don't like that person. So. No, that's fair. I get it. I absolutely get it. Right. So I have one pick, but before I get to that one pick, I need to speak to Troy about a couple of things. Lucifer. First of all, why haven't you finished Lucifer yet? You absolutely... I... No, this podcast <laughs> is too predictable. <laughs> oh my god! I told you, I, I told you literally before this, this, this podcast started. I was like, "Tom, 
please. I told you that please. I would criticize you if you failed. A couple of episodes away, please let me live. A couple of episodes away, let me live. God damn it. Sorry, anyway, I have one question. Leave. Sorry, sorry, Tom. Two seconds. Next week, are you talking about Hawkeye? Because I know you love your Marvel. Oh, Hawkeye. Oh, yes. Oh, that's probably coming out, isn't it? I don't know. This is oh, we'll, see. we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Podcast. Right. Sorry, Tom. I cut you off. Sorry. Yeah, no, 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 that's absolutely fine. I the follow you on the toy train. I know, I know from your channel you have already seen the trailer for this. What are your thoughts on House of the Dragon coming, Troy? <sighs> Game of Thrones. I don't House care. It's behind the book. Where's my book? <laughs> yes, that's so I'm going to say. Just this old right here. By the way, this is a Scottish wrestler called Gledo. He's really cool. Yeah, I'm going to be about this wrestling. What the hell? Oh, Game of Thrones. It's going to be Greek to me. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I'm, I'm literally not asking him. Awesome. Just for your knowledge, Ben, the trailer dropped this week for a was show that's coming out next year. Okay. It, was it I, good? I thought it, looked pretty, I thought it looked pretty cool. But it looked good. It looked good. It looked good. Is wait this see. to explain? Is this to... Okay, my limited knowledge of Game of Thrones, because I stopped after season three, because it's so goddamn slow. Um, All right, so you got up to season three. So basically... The origins of the guy who got his head stuck in a pot and melted by yes. the big... Tattoo Titty Man. Yeah, the the oh, of his really? Where? The origins of his family. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Basically, basically, it's the 300 years before Game of Thrones happens. It's the story of them becoming the dominant. Yeah. Before these kingdoms. Family in the, in the Seven Kingdoms. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but there's an there's basically there's an entire book that's already been written by um, George R. R. Martin, so it can't be fucked up by the. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like calamity twins oh, at the end of it. It's taking forever to finish a book. Jesus Christ. Lazy man. He's more lazy than Santa. Santa works once a year. What's he's got, he's got whatever his process is, man. You go, it's I a, don't care. He's too easy to distract. If I was a book reader, I'd be fuming right now. Stick some pokers up his asshole to get into work again. Sorry. In his defense, man, it's not number one, it's not easy to write a book. Number two, there's a shitload of pressure on him to do it, write a good book right now. So Only in his mind. No, the, you look at the number of fans online demanding that he writes the perfect ending for this fucking... He got stuff. distracted by the TV show. It's his own fault. He should have kept his yeah, mind on the absolutely. book. Absolutely. I have no... He has a great beard. That's the only good thing I can say about him. He sounds like a good author, but he's his own... Is his Actually, he's a, I blame to, him. To be, to be brutally honest, the Game of Thrones book is so-so. They're not that well written, but, you know... <laughs> Well, I blame him for his position. So if he took, if he's taken so long because of distractions, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, so so yeah, that's I just good. wanted to get your opinion quickly on that, Troy. Hey man, it's all good. It's all good. Love it. So my one pick this week is a show that I came across about a week ago. Now, I obviously have a reputation as the resident psychopath on this show I mean, with the of murder. <laughs> You'll love Midnight Mass, Tom. The finale, you'll be able to poke all the bodies and go, mm. yes. And <laughs> see a pervert and stuff. you love it. Right. So my pick this week <laughs> is a show called Only Murders in the Building. Has anybody come across this? Only Murders no. in the Building? Not heard of yeah. it. It's, uh, Hold, wait, on. Wait, it's... Hold on. Is it Disney Plus? I believe it is Disney Plus. Yes. Hold on. Okay. So I, I'm, I think. Let me. This is my, this is my only contribution. <laughs> this on. is written by an elderly man from Hollywood. Ah, is it? Is it Stephen? Ma is it Steve Martin? Steve Martin. Right? It's Steve Martin. Yes. I read about this in Empire Magazine. Please go ahead. I want to watch this. Go tell me. Come on. So, ba okay. the basic premise is the main three characters. You've got um, Steve Martin, Martin Short. Um, right. Trying to think of a, trying to think of something. He was one of the three amigos, if you as, as a point of reference. Cool. But, um, yeah, great, 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 great actor. And um, Selena Gomez. They're three people who live in a really expensive block of flats in New York, and they're all obsessed with um, true crime podcasts. They all <laughs> listen to the same true crime podcast. And there's a like a fire alarm that gets all of them kicked out of their building one night. And they're all listening to the same podcast at a table and they're all very different. They don't like each other and then discover they have this in common. 
and then find out there's been a murder in the building that they live in, which is what's got them kicked out of the building. And it's them starting their own true crime podcast and <laughs> investigating the murder that happened, basically. is the, that's, the, that's the essential story of only murders in the building. But the one rule that Martin Short's character is a real prissy, he's a director, musicals director, and he's very up his own up his own end and his obsession is that they're talking about oh we could do loads of things so so many murders in new york he's no 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 we only do murders in the building and that's his rule there's only been one murder in the building but that's his obsession yeah Yeah. but it's really it's um i mean i have serious issues with steve martin ever since he decided to remake the pink panther but there are some of his stuff that i truly loved in his earlier career and this Although he's not brilliant, the story writing is really good. It's silly, it's irreverent. But there is what the last episode, it's not finished yet. It's only in the UK, it's only up to episode six, I think. In America, it's episode seven. But the last episode, one of the characters in it is deaf. And they did an entirely silent episode with people sign language and other things. There was not a word spoken for an entire 30 minute episode. And it was fucking gripping. It was brilliant. So, so good. Just sitting there going, I can't believe they actually tried it and it worked. It really fucking worked. Yeah, um, yeah. it's not the best comedy in the world, but it's a good watch. It's If you enjoy like true crime, stuff like that, it's good fun. My favourite line, and it just made me think of what we do, is a point where they're speaking to a police officer trying to get information and she just goes, fucking podcasters. <laughs> and that's <he's> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing else I can really say. Martin Short's a genius. Mm. Selena Gomez, I didn't realise it was her. I didn't recognise her. Brilliant work. And she's Steve Martin. Actress, she's underrated. Yeah, very much so. And yeah. Steve Martin, he's a little bit over the top, but it's not too bad in this. I so, love him in Naked Gun. Oh, wait, that's Leslie. Yeah, that's not Naked Gun. Yeah, that's Leslie Nielsen. Yeah, that's <laughs> Is it Leslie Nielsen? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Steve Martin, Steve Martin is the jerk. Yeah. I, was that a comment on him as a person or the, the no, opinions that's of that's Helen Carnes are the opinions of Helen Carnes are not a square syndrome podcast. She was quoting a film then. Was she was brilliant. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. He was he was he did all right up until Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and then he decided to try and be Sergeant Bilko. Oh Dirty that Rotten went Scoundrels is and then What's that? Dirty Rotten Scoundrels got remade a few years ago, but with women. Yes, I, yeah. I know about that. I meant to watch it and I still haven't. It was Rebel yeah, Wilson and Anne Hathaway. I've not watched it because I love the original so much. Yeah. Rebel Wilson. You know, you, know you did it as a stage music. Very, very, very did you, cute personality, yeah. Rebel Wilson. Helen, did you, see, did you see the stage musical? They did it as a stage musical. No, I didn't. I yeah, wish I did. Rufus so. Hound and, oh, the guy who used to be the father of the family in my family. Oh, Chris Marshall. No, the father. Oh, Robert, Robert Lindsay. Lindsay. Robert Lindsay. Oh, that Lindsay. would have been good. Chris Marshall. What those, happened two, those two were playing the Steve Martin and the Michael Caine roles. Oh, but oh, it's, such, it, it's a lovely <laughs> film. I just yeah. have to think about Steve Martin with a cork on the end of his fork, and I just absolutely <laughs> that, that <laughs> image. Ask a question. What was the name of the father in my family? Robert Lindsay. Robert Lindsay. When Chris Marshall left. Him and um, Zoe Wittemaker had to really carry a lot of that plot because uh-huh. the rest of the cast were not funny. Yeah. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. The daughter was a crap role, but the actress was good. But was then she... they put a, a hippie yeah. in and it wasn't funny. Michael was just not funny. When they lost uh, um, the guy from Love Actually, uh, Chris, Chris, yeah, he's really good. He's underrated. My wife's like, where did he go? I was like, where does Death in Paradise... He's a really underrated actor. He's really funny. Yeah, they keep but he, he went, to, he went off to do Love Actually, let's be fair. I love him. He's a legend. He's awesome. Just My family's really underrated as a comedy as well, actually. I'm going to go for it. Brilliant. Yeah, Robert I Lynch watched the Christmas special where they're locked on the London Underground. Mm. Oh, yeah. That pretty much feels like every day now because they always seem to stop the train for no reason for ages at Kennington. So that feels like a, a normal day. Really, now. Robert, Robert Lindsay is a genius. He's an amazing actor, fantastic song and dance man as well. The guy, the guy has Did not know no that. limits to his talents, honestly. 
He's a really good oh, yeah. actor. Really Sorry, good. That, that's a completely random aside that we've just gone on to. Uh. <laughs> so basically, Steve Martin, the last thing that he did that I liked was probably Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. And uh. this, I can tolerate him in. So. He is now. Okay. okay. Praise that's... indeed. <laughs> I used to love Steve Martin. He did some, the Man with Two Brains is one of the stupidest, yeah. brilliant films ever. He tells some, he's some crazy one in his boy with black. I was like, oh, what was that one called again? That's the black. jerk. That's the jerk. Oh my god! His family are black, and he, he grew up. Not I was like, like, what? And they have to sit. They have to sit him down and tell him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> you can't oh, get away with it now. Tell him he's adopted. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Is this why I can't dance? <laughs> I can't dance. <laughs> oh, it's funny music. Oh, <laughs> Still thought that was hilarious. Uh, yeah, the jerk is awesome. I will grant you that the jerk is awesome. I talked uh, the <laughs> jerk is like I was it last week. I talked about jerk from BBC One. Yeah, BBC Two. Yeah. The handicap comedian that was really funny. Oh yeah, so for a second now, I was feel like Steve Martin was in that. I was like, all right, no joke. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, there was a film in 1981, 82, I think it was. It was that, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Okay. That's nearly 40 years old now. Wow, oh, I feel old myself now. Can't believe I'm getting hate crown like this again. As somebody who is over 40 years old. Uh, you, know, you know, you know, don't worry about it. You're good. You're good. <laughs> the, camera, the camera loves you, don't worry about it. The camera loves you. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody can see me, can they? <laughs> Troy, Troy playing the Romeo card, you dirty slut. <laughs> <laughs> Just that I am into witches and broomsticks and stuff. <laughs> Oh my God! So when we get to Buffy for the Halloween special, I can just Anya is going to be like Willow and the witches. I, you I am going to. Oh, when Willow gets some powers, yes. Ben, Willow and Tara, he's not going to shut the fuck up about those two, is he? What? Ben, I swear to God, by the time we get to that special, I'm going to want to kill you. I'm three quarters way through season one, and it is killing me. <laughs> because the problem with American old TV shows back in the day is 22 season, episodes a season is too much. Yeah. We now live in a much better world where it's 10 episodes a season. Much better. Season one was only 12 episodes and it's still nearly killing me. It's got more padding than a 12 year old's training bra. Seriously, America, sort it out. You only need 10 or, episodes a season. Could you, or it could just be that although Joss Whedon is an amazing, amazing writer, they relied far too much on the fact that Sarah Michelle Gellar was attractive to carry the story. Well, is I she think though, yeah. is she, is she, she's I okay. Think, well, I think Joss Whedon well, relied she, on the fact in, that in her she won. She won the sexiest woman in the world while she was she doing. She looked like a forty-five-year-old coming on near the end of that, mate. She looked like she'd been stabbed yeah, towards the end. Life by life. But by then they'd kind of committed to her being Buffy, so they couldn't do much else really, could they? Well, like Hoover just took all the joy out of her soul, and she was just, I don't well, want to be here. Did, they did technically kill her, let her go to heaven, and then pull her back. Into yeah, the, she came yeah. back with plastic surgery and she couldn't act anymore because her cheeks were stuck like that. Like a, well, it's like debatable whether she could act in the first place, but that's, that's, we'll you wait until we'll the... Uh, is the really hot special. and Faith should have murdered her in season three and taken over. But anyway, the only, the only over good that. actor in that show is Alison Hannigan, as proven by the fact she's the only one who's even been vaguely successful. She's amazing. Oh, come on. Anthony, Anthony Head has worked. Oh, no, sorry. Anthony Head. I, yeah, I, I, Anthony Head. Yeah, yeah, Anthony yeah, Head was already like, a star before Buffy. Yeah, oh, he's brilliant. I'm talking about the I'm talking about the ones that were brought in because of Buffy. Anthony Head was already a star before Buffy. Anthony Head, actually, to, bring it back to me. <laughs> Anthony Head is in Ted Lasso playing an absolute fucking shit. By the way, and having so well, actually, does, and having an time so of so his well. life. He's such an arsehole. He can play a really good <laughs> arsehole actor. He plays <laughs> arseholes brilliantly. Yeah. <laughs> Giles is one of his few good guy roles. Really, it's, but it's basically once again. I mean, we will talk about all of this properly on the on the proper podcast for it. Why can he? It's just such a shame that he couldn't have been that magician character for Jonathan Creek past season one because of yeah. Buffy. Because the other guy was awful. He would have been so much better. He anyway, wasn't, he wasn't awful, but Anthony Head would have been better. Anthony Head is the fucking yeah. best. But Anthony Head basically is playing what every single American believes a Brit, Brit a, yeah. an English person should sound. Oh, Anthony Head was my dad. Hugh Grant Pillock. Oh, yeah. Anthony Head 
It's not too late to be my dad. I can replace my dad with you if you want to be my dad, adopted dad. Please I let mean, me know. How well yeah. do you know your mother? <laughs> my mum will be happy for the upgrade. Right. <laughs> and they're divorced. I don't know how that works, but you know. Anyway. Okay. Wow. Family matters. Okay. I think Tara. Mm -hmm. Are you yep. around? Yes. Would you like yes, to tell me go on Tara? I'm around. Mm. Okay. So, sorry. What do you say? It's your go, matey. What's your yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. So actually, I wanted to talk about the Netflix show, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, because it's October. Oh <gasps> mm -hmm. uh, yes, I finished that as well. That literally like okay. not, not. Yeah, so um, I've actually watched every season except for season four, and yeah, it's October, so Halloween is coming up, and I don't know why I've just been watching that show again because I've been stuck here under lockdown for the umpteen time. I don't know why. Yeah, and um, so I actually think this is a bit different, like um, different twist from the original cartoon because the cartoon was really like you know lighthearted and unsatanic and basically just like you know a kid's show with a teenage witch yeah that's what i feel but this one's a bit different because if i remember back in the 90s there was a live action sabrina show as well yeah, this and, is joe hart yeah a comedy yeah movie. and salem looks fake because their cgi stuck well no they didn't it was a puppet <laughs> and they never replaced it so it got more and more okay. threadbare as the seasons went on and then the, the, the CGI got better, but Salem was still literally like a piece of... Uh, by the end, he looked like a, a piece of fluff on a wooden spoon. It was brilliant. It was my favourite thing. <laughs> and then I don't have... think he had died and he just decided to be... He was in mortal zombie cat by the end of it, to be fair. Well, no, like they'd, they'd cut to this like bit of fluff on a wooden spoon and then it'd be talking, it'd be Salem, and then they'd cut to a cat running, like, just a, like a stop footage <laughs> of a cat running. Oh. <laughs> Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. And Top quality editing. Go ahead. Right. So for the next, I mean, for this Netflix show, they literally worship Satan, and they have a church dedicated to Satan. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, right. And they do a lot of like witchcraft and black magic, occult stuff. And then I'm actually thinking, like, would this show ever be banned in some conservative countries? Um, the actual symbol in the actual ch um, church part that actually got taken down because the church of the, the devil church mm -hmm. that literally said, Ah, oh, yeah, we can't do that, you're making us look bad. So they the Satanists, why are they? Yeah, yeah the, the Satanists had actually told the Satanists them, complained that they were being made to look bad. Sorry, hold up, hold up. The Satanists have yeah. fucking feelings. They complain. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really? they do as well. Like, I think they do, I think they do, yeah. Like, it's settled in court and all that. That's like Slayer telling people, oh yeah, I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to walk away from that. I'm going to walk away from that. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in religious matters. <laughs> go, on, go on, go on, talk. Continue. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah. And pretty much, you know, what I like about the show is actually the um, atmosphere. It looks like it's always Halloween for some reason. I don't know why. It has that Halloween vibe all the time. It has and, a Tim Burton feel to it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, it does actually. And the house is always spooky. Like I don't know why either. And um, some characters remain constant. Like they got a better Salem, an actual cat, and it's really, it's really cute and fat. And the meow is so loud. I don't know why. I just like Salem in this one better. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so her two aunties are there, Hilda and Zelda. But um, I mean they're not Selma young. Selma Gomez. Like... That's hey, is she really good? Because she's a great actress. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're not young um, as portrayed in the previous live action on the cartoons. In fact, they're... They weren't that young in the comedy, to be fair. They look like mm. they were put together by Silicon in LA and just try yeah. to be 20 years younger. Yeah, two old aunties, to be precise. They actually show up in one of the episodes as well, the original, original two. Yeah. Yeah, they turn up, don't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. And apparently this one has a twist as well. Uh, in the actual cartoon, Sabrina's actually a half-human and half-witch teenager. She mm. literally is, because one parent is human and the, other, the father is supposedly a witch. But there's a plot twist that she's actually the daughter of Satan. N not Satan, but Lucifer Morningstar, before he became mm. Satan. Yeah. Hold on. So that sounds like Troy, because Troy likes witches, so he's the father. So he got <laughs> Satan. <laughs> That's exactly. fine, Troy. Okay, yes, exactly. So basically, her parents, 
um, I believe, the mortal mom and the witch dad. The witch dad wasn't the father. More like, I, I don't know how Satan impregnated the mom and that's how Sabrina came out. To, the, the, Satan's a man, Troy's a man, neither do I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It never works in mysterious ways. Oh my god. Exactly, yeah. And then there is oh. Harvey. And yeah. well, she doesn't end up with Harvey in this show because Harvey is human and purely human. But there's another guy called Nick. Um, I believe this guy's a bit weird. He goes to bondage, like. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm like, I'm 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 the way you love wow, that sounds like. Uh, thought, okay, okay. Like, you like, see this those, like massage parlors or shit you see in Soho area. <laughs> yeah, he goes to those, but only like bondage. Yeah, ones. You see Sabrina actually catches him at one of those, getting wrecked. Like, what the fuck? Seriously? Yeah, if I actually saw some people from my real life, this Japanese dude in that thing, I won't be surprised. Oh my gosh, Tara. Tara, Tara. we're going into your dating history again. Now. It's, it's, it's Tara's story time. I'm ready, let's go. Okay, right. Have you got any experiences you want to share with us don't now? Don't like, don't do it. I'm getting, yeah, so, I'm relaxing, um, ready for this. Okay, and she has a lot of human, yeah, human friends as well. And she actually has a half cousin called Ambrose. And I, I'm not sure how it's related to her, but Ambrose actually, like, you know, stays in the house with the aunties and Salem. So this is an additional character. Oh, yes, guys. Oh. Is the show any good, though? Really good, really good That's show. Yeah. See, really, I, right. I like it a lot. Hey, um, you guys know this person as well. Michelle Gomez is in this as well, the female master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Really, yeah. Really, yeah. Really, 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 She's so good in the, uh, what was it, the flight attendant. Oh my god. So yeah, good. She's so good. I remember her, right, we're going back a few years now, but she was great in the book group. Do you remember the book group? Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, she was a, she was a footballer's wife in that. Yeah. <laughs> Launched the career of James Lance, who is also in Ted Lasso. Just getting another little, um, Look at that. little so, segue into that. I've, Michelle Jones is one of the most... She's married, she's married to um, the guy from Pirates of the Caribbean, isn't she? Yeah. Johnny Depp. No. no. Oh, what's his name? The guy from Coupling. Don't get me started, Johnny Depp. Jack um, Davenport. Jack Davenport, yeah. Oh, but, oh, oh well, the other guy from Coupling, the Welsh guy from Coupling, is in Sabrina. Oh, really? Well, Richard Coyle. Well, Richard oh, yes, Coyle, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. when Coupling went off the cliff. I like you referred to him as Welsh, because you know Richard Coyle is not Welsh in any way, shape or form. He was Welsh in Coupling. He was in Coupling. That's just what by I people. meant. That's yeah. what I meant. The Welsh come from Coupling. Richard Coyle's amazing. Richard Coyle's awesome. Richard my question Coyle's is, legend. My question is, in Sabrina, is he unflushable? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and does he travel to Lesbania? First of all, it's pronounced Lesbos. Lesbos. <laughs> Lesbos. God, when Jeff left in season four, it was not the same. Coupling. No. God, he was such an integral part of it. The thing about Copeland is all six of them are important. You take one out, it just threw the show off when you put that new guy in. It was still yeah. good jokes in the fourth uh, season. It just the dynamic wasn't quite right. the, the Jeff stuff made me laugh the most. Uh, the leg. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got too many legs, yeah. Oh, my God. Just Jeff. <laughs> Jeff is the best character for me. He's my Joey. Anyway. Yeah, we, we've spoken about Copeland oh, yeah, more than another on this podcast. Twice. Sorry, Tara. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's okay, right, yeah. Okay, I actually recommend this show because personally, I um I liked it a lot. Like the autumn atmosphere, the Halloween vibes, and everything, and it just has yeah something that I actually pretty much enjoy. And it has a cat, a big <laughs> fat fluffy cat. Who doesn't love cats? Some people don't. I know oh. someone who, who who hates them and wanted to eat them, and say okay. he would kill them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What happened there? I thought you were talking about that. I um, scolded him. <laughs> you mate. What? Brand new cherry flavor. So I thought you shot, shot him. him. Yeah. You oh my gosh. Hot water. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah, there are additions to this. Uh, oh, there's a Lilith as well. Lilith is actually, yeah, the first wife of Adam, who left Adam in the garden because she couldn't stand his... um. 
MC penis, apparently. So I don't know how she ended up in hell as a demon. Just because she left Adam. Yeah, and then she becomes involved with Lucifer slash Satan. I'm not sure how. I need to reread the Bible again. So, yeah. The way and, you think you're amazing, though, I admit. Yep. Satan and, is a yeah, and in this show, um, other than high school, there's also the Academy of Unseen Arts for the witches and all the gifted people. So there are characters from there as well. So I think, what was that? I don't know. Uh, just keep going. Don't worry. Someone for, okay, okay. I thought someone farted. Like, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a okay. computer fart, but definitely not one of us. I think it's safe to say. <laughs> Okay, right, yeah, so so basically this show actually adds a bit more in depth and it's definitely a better spin-off, like not just another like remake or copy of the 90s or the cartoon version. I have actually yet to watch season four, yeah. Okay, so it's basically oh. very close to the original Archie comics, right? It's like literally yes, yes. Like based on that, not Melissa Joe Hart, basically. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really. I've heard Yeah. I definitely love Salem of all. And um, would you say that this is the best show, better than Charm, that has witches in it, Tara? Troy needs okay. to. Right. Actually, to be honest, I, I never watched Charm, but when I was in like primary school, I, I used to read the books. <laughs> okay. Still better than but I, I used to read the books in primary school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. When she sees the show, then she'll then she'll say Tom's the best. No, no, she won't. That's for another day. That's for another day. God, the day we do the Charm special is going to be like just an hour of silence, and Troy talking mm -hmm. to an empty room. We've all got books it's out. Amazing. It's going to be reading. amazing. I'm going to be a glorious day. My okay. Day. It's glorious day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Let's make a bed. <laughs> You're going to start giggling for the next 10 minutes, aren't you? I'm going to stop you right there. I know, you better stop me, you better stop me, Ben. I know, just, I'm thinking about the charm, just makes me want to just smile, man. I have an email very quickly. Helen can join in on this. Oh, God. Um, yes. Okay. Don't worry, Helen. Next time you come back, there might be marriage proposals. These things tend to happen. Everyone's trying to hook up with all these members of the staff of the, the team, except for me. I'm married. So, hey. Hello. Well, I'm engaged, so, you know. Well, hey, so Helen is off, off the table, so don't be in the program. No, no, so we got a uh, email from France, uh, Maurice from France. Hello, sir. Thank you for the email. Um, if you could shoot dead one character from a TV show to make it better, which one would you go with? Shoot a character Ooh. from a TV show. Okay. That's a good question. That's oh, okay. So is it one person or you got one bullet? You got one bullet. You got. A, they're, they're so not can I line back. up the three from Charmed and put them all together and try and get all three in a one? No, no, that wouldn't happen. That wouldn't work. I, I have a work. pick. List. Like, <laughs> I do have a pick. I'm gonna shoot. Uh, what's this girl's name? I'm trying to think. Okay, it's from a, a Korean drama called Goblin. I'm gonna shoot the main girl. Her name is uh, Ji Eun Tak. Yeah, cause she's annoying. <laughs> for some yeah. reason. Uh, let's see. I don't know. She's just her face and everything. She's just annoying. Even yeah. So, see the person that I want to shoot today. If I tell you who it is, it's going to be spoilers because it's somebody from Ted Lasso. Okay. So <laughs> I'm just going to keep that to myself. But yeah, if you've seen the Ted Lasso finale, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Just choose John Barrowman. That's a safe bet. <laughs> Good choose, John Barrowman. Shoot Captain yeah. Jack in season one of Doctor Who, so he can't do torture it and he's dead. Shoot John he's immortal Barrowman. though, isn't that the whole yeah. point? <laughs> Good point, well made. Yeah, waste, waste, waste the bullet, isn't it? Waste the bullet. Cut his dick off and throw it in the bin so that he can't annoy people with it. Oh. Sorry, I've I just I've been triggered by John Barrowman again this week. Next week, that's not about John Barrowman. <laughs> <laughs> Um, In all honesty, I'd probably shoot RuPaul, but that's just a... He's a real person, dear character! Yeah, I would shoot Michelle Fajaj because she never seems to know what she likes about anything. Don't get honestly, like, she's got a real thing about having stuff glued to corsets, but apart from when it doesn't make sense. 
Like she said, oh, you can't just glue something to a corset and call it an outfit. And then it's like, oh, you've glued that thing to a corset. That's amazing because I've been told really to say I like this. Oh. Right. Anyway, sorry. That was a that was a bit of a rude post drag race <laughs> side note. No, um, no, no. Shooting my neck eyes would improve that show so much. Oh my gosh, the uh, who did you shoot? Um, literally the the, 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 the son, the son in the strain, the second son when they replaced him. I would kill that kid. That kid was annoyed. Oh my gosh, if you've seen the strain, you know the the, the struggle, the trial and tribulations of that kid. I knew he was annoying. I wanted to go from the oh. Also, oh. I would shoot one of the kids from Bly Manor as well. My oh. Gosh. Perfectly splendid. Perfectly <laughs> splendid. That child, that female needs to get put in the farm. But Perfectly yeah. splendid. splendid. <laughs> child yeah. actors are fine. They should just be silent. That's a new rule. <laughs> Some just so Perfectly bad. splendid. Just put her in the Thames with a chain around her ankles and watch. just dip her in the Thames and let her drown. The character, not the actress. <laughs> The yeah, character. just the kind, just the kind, just the kind. Don't condone drowning children on this podcast. Yeah, At least now we go. Yeah. Right, I got through this whole podcast and didn't insult a celebrity except for John Barrowman. That's a new record for me. You did well, you did well. That's good because normally I'd be. Become... You, yeah. you know, I mean, I've done, I've done some. Anyway. So that's right. We're going to wrap this up because we've done an hour and a half. That's cool. Okay. So, um, so we've got a uh, anime. We're going to quickly wrap this up in two minutes. So, House of Animation podcast comes out every couple of days. Hopefully, it mm -hmm. won't be so late this week. Troy will try and give it to me on Wednesday. The next one up is we've done Shrek. What's up next? Go on, Ben. Give it to him. Find Nemo. Find Nemo. I can't remember anymore. We've done Lord Okay, while I'm doing that, we'll just go through the channels. Troy, what is your channel? Where can we find you? Legend of Old 101. Like, share, subscribe. Tara? Yes, everyone. My channel is down below in the link. And if you like buff Asian men and Asian beefcake, oh, no. please check out my channel. The titty men will be there. Um, I've got Benny Mega Benny Six... Men, M E N. Okay, oh, God, she's working up now. Mega <laughs> Benny 666 for my gaming channel, which is never uploaded, but you know it's there. Tom's got nothing because Tom doesn't like you. He has lots of stuff, but doesn't advertise on here. <laughs> Helen, have you got anything you would like to advertise? No, I'm old, I don't have any of that. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> brilliant, fantastic. Nemo. Okay, I'm Nemo. What we got there? Okay. Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. He's next week. Um, we're going to talk about why Dory is one of the best characters of all time. So that will be up during the week. Um, we just want to say thank you. We've hit 10k downloads and everything. So thank you very much for the downloads on Spotify. We really appreciate it. Keep going. Hello to France, who's the new downloaders country this year, this week, and Saudi Arabia as well. Hello, new new countries. Lovely, we're spreading across the country, the world, like a virus. All right, okay. so we're back next week. It will be, so for now, it's goodbye for me. Bye for me. Bye for me. Goodbye for me. Bye for me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, please do come back whenever you want to, whenever you want like to. You're always welcome. Cool. Okay. Yeah, it's 6 a.m. here. I'm going to go to bed. Yeah, we're all going. We're going. We're going. We're all flagging. <laughs> all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Seriously, John Berman, go fuck yourself.